you were going to mention reader, right? For like how the things come in. Um, I, I'm doing similar to what you're doing. I think your reader readability uh, or read wise, your read wise reader is probably more mature than mine, but those articles that I get and like, um, you know, here's one source is, uh, the work lab, the work lab, uh, mm -hmm. subscription, work lab. there's a podcast, but there's also like the website and the blog. Um, as those come into my reader, I will see prompts that are inspirational in there and I'll highlight them in reader and save them to the notebook. Um, so I know whenever you were in, you were mentioning reader, like before we got started, mm -hmm. is that kind of what you're doing as well? Yeah. Is saving them that way. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the personal things we do. And then I think we'll, we'll kind of bookend it with some of the things that we do in the enterprise that we work with. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to bring my screen back up um, on the screen. And um, I did post mm -hmm. a link to the work lab in the, uh, in the chat window. <laughs> um, but just heading back into um, some of the, the tools that, uh, that I use. Um, so um, I'm on a Mac, but this thing that I'm getting ready to show you, it works in a couple of, uh, it works on both uh, Mac and uh, Windows. Um, mm -hmm. I use a lot of the Microsoft resources. I think some of the, the Microsoft resources are really, really good. And that's kind of the the, the core place to, to start. Like, you know, I, I joke in some of the training classes, have you read the manual? And most people have not read the manual. They're just like getting started. This is the manual. But sometimes the manual is in a couple of different places. You get a piece from here, mm -hmm. you get a piece from there. And then you literally piece it all together and, and you you kind of figure out the narrative and you go from there. Um, so one of the tools that I use um, for uh, consolidating information is this tool called um, Reader. Uh, it's by a company called ReadRise. So it's uh, ReadWise Reader. We'll put a link up in the uh, in the chat window for it in a moment. Um, but it's a browser plugin. It's also a desktop app if you're on Mac. And I think they 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 may have released it on Windows. I'm not 100%. I use a Mac, so I've got it there. Um, but what Reader allows me to do is like, here's this article. It's cool. And I'm basically just going to clip it. And when I do that, I get this reader bar across the top. But here's what's really cool about reader. Um, it, it gives me a reading view. So if I want to, I can open it in the reading view. And when you do that, it basically just gives you the content. So it's it's literally a reading app, kind of like Pocket or uh, Instapaper. So it allows you to just focus in on the content and you can read through it. What's really cool, though, is you can um, you can move through it with just keyboard shortcuts. So you can just I'm using the up and down key on the keyboard right now. Um, but when I get to something that's important, I hit H and I've just made a highlight for that thing. And not only do I make a highlight for it, but I can also go in and I can give it my um, uh, personal notes right here. This is what I think about this thing. So now I've got mm -hmm. a note and now I've got something that's uh, that's highlighted, but I can go back and revisit that. Another thing that's really cool about reader is the ability to tag. So I can tag and I can say, oh, hey, this is really important. And it applies to something that I'm already tagging on called prompting. So now I've tagged it and given it a personal note and I've highlighted it in, um, in, the, in the reader platform, which is neat. But I can also go and view other actions. I can copy the text. I can share the text. But this is my favorite feature. It's connected to this thing called Ghost Reader. And Ghost Reader is powered by ChatGPT. Ghost Reader mm -hmm. would allow you to do things like simplify it, translate it, uh, TLDR, turn it into a haiku, uh, haiku <laughs> make it into a flashcard. It uses generative ai to help you to to do something with that thing that you've highlighted i think that's just like super super valuable so as i'm like reading this thing i'm just concentrating on the on the text i just use my keyboard shortcuts to move through this is important let me go ahead and highlight and tag that so i can make sure i can get back to this easy um, later on and i can go through the whole document <clears throat> if you use the mobile app for reader there's a text to speech you can listen to it, read the article to you, which is great if I'm going to go. I do on that a walk. lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, I'll take a couple of documents, make sure they're queued up in Reader, and then I'll go on a walk, put my AirPods in, and then I'll just listen to the document, which is uh, pretty awesome. But you might have noticed over here on the sidebar, on the sidebar, um, it gives me a summary, and that summary was generated using ChatGPT. Um, and so uh, 
uh, you can re-invoke Ghost Rider and you can re-summarize it if you want. Additionally, uh, it tells you what the source is. And so if you want, you can subscribe to that source. Mm -hmm. That's like the Feedly app. So there's an app out there called Feedly that allows you to uh, subscribe to RSS feeds, blogs, and YouTube channels. Reader has that built in. So now I've got basically Pocket and Instapaper and Feedly in a single app. And it's got generative AI tools built into it. And it works in my web browser and it works on my mobile device. So I can I can consolidate some of my various um, applications into one application, which is cool. But we're not done yeah. yet. At the bottom, it tells me some <laughs> metadata, where it came from, when it was published. And you can edit that metadata. You can also go to the notebook and you can see the highlights all in one place, including, including any the personal tag. notes that you've made with mm -hmm. that. And if you need to, you can export that. So you can export it to your clipboard and put it in Loop. You can export it to your clipboard and put it in Notion or put it in Obsidian. You can take it with you. You can even download the uh, annotations if you need to. And they're in Markdown. And you can put that in your note-taking app of choice if you want a, stand a standalone note-taking app. My feedback to Reader and Readwise would be, can you make the notebook kind of its own standalone feature in your platform? I think that would be game changing. If I could have a full Readwise Reader notebook in addition to the Reader app and Readwise, it'd be amazing. And then lastly, um, if there are links in the document, it'll it'll extract some of that and it'll it'll kind of point that out and bring it to you. Super, super powerful. Um, but I'm gonna exit out of the article and now I'm in my inbox. So that's where I just pulled this thing in. I manually added it into my um, reader library. That's where I am. I'm in my reader library. These are mm -hmm. things that I've manually added. There's an app on your mobile device, and the um, the oh, if like I'm on social media, I can just say send a reader, and it automatically creates an entry here in my library. I send stuff in here all the time. <laughs> this is like my bookmarking tool, and it because mm -hmm. I can use it across a bunch of apps. It's one stop for me to go back and find it. When I go back and click on that article, it takes me right back to where I left off, but I can do some other things. So I have my tags over here. Well, I can create views around my tags and I can say, well, filter, create a view and find me everything that I've tagged with Microsoft Copilot. Or I could create a filter or a view and say, well, you know, find me everything that um, maybe relates to like uh, prompting, uh, for instance. So like I would say like, um, I'm looking for like maybe the, if I could type, um, the prompting tag. And I could find everything that's maybe in my inbox that's related uh, to that. And then I can save that essentially as a view. And then I can go back into that and all that stuff's consolidated in one area. And you can tag with multiple items in there. So if you're familiar with SharePoint and columns and views, you're going to be right at home here. This is great. Yeah. Um, but not only can I create my own custom views, I can also create my feed. And my feed are the RSS feeds that I want to follow. The RSS feeds, the blogs, the websites, even um, podcasts and um, and uh, like YouTube. And so mm -hmm. I can pull all of that into one place. And so I can sort through here. And if I find something that um, uh, that I'm interested in, I can read the article. And if it's you know valuable content, I can say, well, maybe move that to my inbox and put it in my library. Maybe just archive it for later. Maybe tag it maybe add a document note and go invoke ghost reader and and do those things against it and i can uh, i can go through my feed at my cadence whenever i want and then save the things that are important to me back to my library and they're organized in inbox later in archive so i can get to it if i uh, if i need um and the last thing I'll, i'm going to tell you about this that um i really like is i'm just going to head back to where i started here's the article that i started with this is the prompt engineering um article i'm just going to refresh the page Notice when I refresh the page, I'm still in my web browser, but look what it did. It highlighted on the page, on top of the actual content, my highlight, highlights and told me that I had a note and a tag on that. So I can view my stuff in the reader view, mm -hmm. but I can also view it here in uh, in the in the context of the actual document, which I think is, is huge. So I use this all the time. Um, okay. And I have it, I have it here, but I also have it as a standalone um, desktop app. 
Um, and I know John put the QR code up there in the um, uh, uh, top. Um, there's the code for the reader promo. Um, you get like a, it's a paid app. You get a couple of months for free. Um, if you use my promo code, uh, I don't mm -hmm. get anything for it. Um, but you get a couple months for free. <laughs> yeah. Promo code. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Like, this sounds like an ad, but <laughs> like, Andy's not making any money off of it. No. We just wanted to share that, like, this is how we collect things and organize them using this application. Yep. It is paid, so his link does give you an extra month, so you can get like two months for free instead of one. But it's not like, you know, neither of us have any affiliation with, right. with Readwise or anything yeah. like that. It's just like you get an extra time if you want it. I pay um, for it. I love it. I think it's a great app. And so going back to the yeah, question, like how do I you pay for it too? It's like $100 a year or something like that or 120 now. But yeah, I'm doing I think the it's same like 100. thing. Um, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. And if you go to their, um, their website, um, it's really detailed and like, um, they'll, they'll walk you through all the, uh, ins and outs of like getting started with it. Um, I'll grab the, the URL, make sure everybody can get to that. Um, yeah. use my promo code though. <laughs> I want to see if I can export this or not. So I wanted to just bring up my, my reader as well, just to show you guys, here's what I subscribe to. Like Andy talked about the feed that the uh -huh. things come in. How do you get prompts? How do you figure out like things to, to save. So this is me just sharing my feed here. Um, and you'll notice like there's several ones in here that um, are YouTube channels. So like Matt Vidpro AI, um, uh, Mike, Jeremy, um, OpenAI, of course. These, Matt Wolf, he's another uh, AI guy. So these like AI centric ones, even if they're a YouTube channel that you subscribe to and you kind of bring it in this, this feed, um, it will give you the transcript of the video. So I watch it and it like follows along with the transcript. And then that way, if he like says a prompt or something like that, I'll highlight it from the transcript and then I'll be able to save that. And like Andy showed, I'll tag it as a prompt that I want to remember. And that's how like I'm extracting even from a video because like reader will give me the transcript and I can basically read the video that way. Um, but there's like, if you want to screenshot or go back in time later on and look at this, um, look at this, you can, but that's all of my feed. If you guys want to like kind of copy what I've got.